to move through your screen. Oklahoma, the champions coming out of the central region, southwest region, taking on Arizona from the west. And look, we have four games on the docket, one down already as we take you back to some fun action to start the day. How about Kennedy Watson and her Missouri team shutting out Nevada? It was Watson who had seven strikeouts but did not allow a hit. The no-hitter complete first time in two years, and she helped her effort at the plate as well. Missouri moves along. Daniel Boone, Little League, awaiting the winner of this game for the semifinal play that starts tomorrow. Of course, we have two more games coming up, so a full day of action as we say hello and welcome you in. Hey there. There's a three-time All-American from Tennessee, Madison Shipman. I'm Tiffany Green. We have thoroughly enjoyed ourselves watching these youngsters rise to the occasion, and now more than ever, it's high stakes right here. Oh, absolutely. It is win or go home. That's what it all comes down to. Both of these teams are going to have all hands on deck to do whatever it takes to extend their lead, their time here in Greenville for the Little League Softball World Series. And we've got a great matchup between an explosive offense for Oklahoma and solid pitching for Arizona. But when you talk about the offense for Oklahoma, it all starts with Juliana Hutchins. We saw her power back in their regional, blasting a three-run home run. And she has carried that power here into the Little League Softball World Series. She hits the ball for power opposite field and just when pitchers think they have her figured out they throw her in off speed and oh yeah she can hit that one as well and you think why don't teams just walk Juliana Hutchins? Well it's because Candace Burnett is coming up right behind her the righty with a ton of power. She can drive that ball all the way out to the wall and she does a nice job of spraying the ball across the field, racking up the RBIs as she goes along. Green Country Little League has been in one of those must-see teams. The top-hitting team in the tournament, Hutchins and Burnett, their numbers scorching. They jump off the page to you. Six RBI apiece. So that means that the tandem from Arizona has some work to do in Lexi Honey and Lily Hamill. Lily Hamill and Lexi Honey are a great complement for each other because they throw completely different. Hamill brings the velocity. She'll bring it up there in the upper 50s, even touch 60s with a great off speed as well. When they bring in somebody like Lexi Honey, she drops the velocity down. She really works the corners, has a ton of spin, and oh yeah, a fantastic changeup to go along with it. Well, it's Lily Hamill and Lexi Honey who have been great leaders for this young Cactus Foothills Little League team. They have made it in just five short years to this point, and now they have a grand opportunity to advance against a very tough Oklahoma team. So we've talked about it. These players are ready to be about it. Game two from the Little League softball. My name is Kylie Husser, and my favorite food is sushi. My name is Alexis Kern, and my favorite subject is English. My name is KK Mikus, and my favorite emoji is the emoji of My name is Hallie Law, and my favorite emoji is the Batting order, we saw another team from out west travel a long way to get here more than 2300 miles for this crew out of cave creek and they are ready to go bria belden who has driven in one of the two runs for arizona is up to the plate and she will start things off in just a moment though ava van lanshoot the cleanup hitter for arizona has also had herself a nice string of games yeah, throughout this entire week, Arizona has had a couple of players in their lineup that have gotten a hits, even multi-hit games, but it just comes down to them being able to string it all together, one through nine, pass that bat along to get some more runs on the board. But they're definitely going to have their work cut out for them today, going up against Cambry Casey in the circle for Oklahoma. Her coaches say she might be small in stature, but the thing that she does great is hits her location. She utilizes that spin, works the outside part of the plate to induce some ground balls, trust that defense behind her to get out of these innings. Cambry Casey 2-0 during pool play on their journey to try to become Little League Softball World Series champions. Starts it off with a strike. 
already a great example of what you're going to see out of Casey working down in the zone. She doesn't leave a lot of balls right over the heart of the plate, so these teams can't get good barrel on it consistently. Already off to a good start with two straight strikes. Well, she struck out 11 in that complete game effort over New Jersey. Gave up two hits and just one unearned run. So Cambry Casey, one of the two arms in the circle we have seen this week for Oklahoma. Bria Belden, the 12-year-old, coming from the Sonoran Desert with the rest of her teammates, ready to get charged up here as their fans are loud and proud in the stands. The highlighter neon shirts we've seen, and Belden staying off of that one. One common theme that we've seen throughout this entire week, Tiffany, is the pitchers needing to establish that strike zone early in the game, see what the home plate umpires are calling, what corners they can work consistently through the rest of the game. And she lifts this one in the center field, the fly ball out, and Riley Dotson is there. It's a nice piece of hitting by Bria Belden. She ended up falling behind in that count, worked her way back to even got a pitch that she could handle, drove it out to center field, just went right to Riley Dotson, but that's the kind of tone that Arizona needs to set right from inning one. Lexi Honey, who has reached safely in the last three games, scored one of the two runs for Arizona. They will need more offensive production, and Honey is one of those players that can help get them going. A good leader, very vocal on the team. Arizona finds themselves in this position. They moved up after New York had to withdraw because of a positive COVID test within the team. And Arizona wants to relish in this opportunity now that they are here. They want to show why they should remain here. And I'd imagine they'd agree this is much more appropriate softball weather than what they had to endure yesterday. Several rain delays. And Cambry Casey gets her look and Honey is retired. Casey smiles after the strikeout. <laughs> you got to love to see the emotion on these players' faces. This one's a nice looking curveball on the outside part of the plate. Again, we're establishing the strike zone early in this game. That one just barely hitting that outside corner of the plate called for strike three. Cambry Casey will give you plenty of smiles, not a big talker. She lets her play do that on the field. Ahead in the count to Lily Hamill. And just slow, one ball, one strike. Lily Hamill, who has been a special talent in this Cactus Foothills Little League program. Been playing since eight years old with a few of her teammates. So they look to her for leadership. And she does so by example. We'll see if she can get something moving with two outs. Strikeout, back-to-back -back strikeouts for Cambry Casey. One, two, three inning for the Hurlet. Cambry Casey doing a great job of getting all that momentum on her team's side early in this ball game, establishing the strike zone. Goes up with the rise ball to get back-to-back -back strikeouts, and her team's picking up the bats. They are back on the field and hitting 329 star Hutchins Burnett doing a lot of the damage, and as long as Alexis Kierstead stands in the box. She says, I can do that too. She will face off against Lily Hamill. And strike swinging there is Hamill registering 59 miles per hour. They say she's comfortable at 62. She's touched it. Hey, Hamill's already turning up the heat here knowing it is elimination Monday. It is all out on the line. Win or go home situation. 
Kirsten over to Honey at third base. The throw is in time. The 5 3 put out. It's a really good start for Arizona. That defense is going to need to be on their toes all game long. And a good location for this screwball in on the hands of Alexis Kirstad, hitting it over to Lexi Honey at third base, who fires it across to one and registers the first out. The numbers for Hamill there on your screen. This could be a big game and day for her and her Arizona crew. If they could potentially knock off who have been the front runners so far during pool play in Oklahoma. Stakes raised. You win or you go home. One ball, one strike to tail and star. Who has great pride representing the state of Oklahoma. And also Muskogee Creek Nation. As many of these players with Native American heritage. A sense and point of pride for Green Country Little League. The 2-1. Really liking the locations of these pitches down in the zone. Not only are they down in the zone, but they're also tailing inside to these right-handed batters. A lot of foul balls already. And coming in with that high velocity, you can see Taylor Starr trying to get her timing down on those fast pitches. And Hamill gets the strike out of big out there and throwing the heat thus far is Lily Hamill. Hamill is feeling it out there in the circle. This one again tailing inside to those right-handed batters. A lot of times that we see out of pitchers is that curveball going away from the righties into the other batter's box. This is a screwball coming back in. And Lily Hamill records her first strikeout. In an early test for Hamill with Juliana Goose Hutchins at the plate. One of the top hitters in this tournament, nicknamed Goose. Hit the first ball out of the park here at Stalling Stadium. Back against North Carolina Thursday. Another good pitch. That one just a little high. Ball one according to the home plate umpires. Strike zone. Figuring it out. That's what you have to do. You have to make those adjustments both as a pitcher and a hitter. You know, on both sides of the field, it's all about controlling the controllables. The umpire strike zone is not something you can control. You just have to adjust to it as the game goes on. A couple of things you can control walking into a game, your attitude and your effort and your energy that you bring in. You can just feel the energy down there on the field already. The 2-1 to Hutchins. Hutchins lists this one high into left field. Ellie Henry misplays it off her glove, and Hutchins runs into the second baseman, Kaylee Kundal, and she's got to hurry to get back in the second base. Like they're going to call interference on the defender there and award Juliana Hutchins third base because she was traveling between second and third. That interference there, they're going to give her third base. Juliana Hutchins a bit jammed up on this pitch, driving it deep out into left field. It looked like Ellie Henry had it tracked perfectly and it just tips off of the end of her glove. You'll notice here as Hutchins is rounding second base, she runs into Kaylee Kundal. And because of that, awarded third base. The miscue in left allows a base runner. But you see Lily Hamill going right at these Oklahoma batters. Hutchins 60 feet from home with Candace Burnett, who has backed her up all summer long. And the grounder over to Honey, and Honey whips it over to first. And that ends the inning. So a strong start for Arizona. We're tied with Houston.
brown and my favorite emoji is a cactus. My name is Lexi Honey and my favorite athlete is Sispay. My name is Lily Hamill and my favorite athlete is Jocelyn Allo. My name is Ava Van Lanshu and my favorite athlete is Devontae Adams. And it's Ava Van Lanshoot who will start it off here. And all eyes on the field with this great quarterfinal matchup between Arizona and Oklahoma. Good swing and foul off from Van Lanshoot, their power hitter in the lineup. And they're definitely going to need Ava Van Lanshoot today to get on base, be consistent. She's one of the batters that has already had a multi-hit game here in Greenville. This would be another great opportunity for her to get something going offensively. Uh, two base hits against New York in day one. Also picked up another hit against Texas. I tell you, over the days, the energy and the intensity has really picked up in the stands. And of course... On the diamond as well, Cambry Casey, third strikeout in a row. Again, we're seeing that big smile on the face of Cambry Casey out there in the circle. Another pitch outside, this one going up in the zone as well to Ava Van Landshut. Gets her swinging underneath that one for Casey's second strikeout. I like the oomph that the pitchers are bringing for both Oklahoma and Arizona games up, level up. Single elimination bracket. Trying to play their way into the semifinals and perhaps be the last team standing with championship Wednesday from Stalling Stadium. Kendall Gillum, the catcher. You know, getting to know these young ladies over the course of the past week, we can definitely tell that they have fiery, competitive personalities. And I think we're getting a taste of where that's coming from in the stands. We've almost got a bit of a competition between the fans. Who can be louder up there? But I guarantee it is firing up every single one of these young ladies out there on the field. Well, I think, too, for Oklahoma, they're glad to see their team back on the field after last night's game was canceled. For Arizona, I mean, look, they've got endurance after better than a three and a half hour rain delay yesterday. So you got to muster up all the energy you can. And, and it's just like they're waking up and getting going if they were on West Coast time. The 3-1 to Gillum. Well, even, we even heard that energy coming out of the manager for this Arizona team, Coach Brett Kundal. He was leading the cheers in the dugout, trying to get his team fired up, getting the stands fired up. Because we saw them have, they've had great energy throughout every single one of their games that they've played here in Greenville. This one, a win or go home situation. You need to do whatever you can to bring all that passion, all that fire to try to come out with a win here today. Well, Brett Kundal says not only are they fired up here as he flexed earlier looking like the Hulk, but also back home in Cave Creek, several watch parties happening as we speak at Harold's, the Creek, Rosati. Everybody's watching on, and they're glad to see the first base runner for Arizona as Kendall Gillum gets the one-out free pass. Good job by Gillum watching that one go by. Not missing by much up in the zone, but enough to get a runner on board and see if they can get something going here in the top of the second. Molly Brown standing in. Brown sees a strike. That's what Cambry Casey has delivered to the first six Arizona batters she's faced. Well, and when you're talking to her coaches, that that's one thing that makes her so good out there in the circle is her ability to get ahead of batters. And so far, she's been doing a nice job, not just getting ahead, but staying ahead. Of course, just giving up that last walk to Kendall Gillum. Looking to turn things around here to Molly Brown, already ahead in the count 0-2. 
Casey looks to the dugout, checks the wristband, gets the sign, the windup, and here we go. Puts it into play. The backhand made and the flip over to second base in time. And how about A.J. Tucker with a nice place on the right side. We've talked about the all-out effort that we've seen from the pitchers, from the hitters, but how about the defense? Allie Tucker having to run a long way up the middle for this one. Ends up diving to stop it from going into center field, and then the flip roll over to Taylor Starr, who's able to get that lead runner out over at second base. I feel like the flip roll could also turn into a dance. I'm just going to say... Flip it, roll it. Maybe a TikTok, too. Tick I, you mm -hmm. know, we mm -hmm. have been known to show off our dance moves up here in the booth. We've been inspired from what we've seen mm -hmm. out on the field. Not near as smooth as these young ladies, though. So. <laughs> Anything is possible as Olivia Fossey fouls that one back. 0-2 to, to Fossey, one of the two Fossey sisters playing on this team. Or yeah, Sister Ava. Also with this group as well. Swing and a miss. And fourth strikeout for Cambry Casey. Runner left on base. But Cambry Casey ever. Very young making their first appearance at the Softball World Series. And when you think about Brett Kundal and the job that he has done getting everyone involved and Cave Creek to buy in to this group started about five or so years ago back and, and, and really it has just ballooned in interest and numbers. Yeah, Coach Kundal said that when he moved there six years ago, there was only 20 girls playing in the Little League. And he said, I want to do whatever I can to try to grow this as much as possible. And since then, now this year, there were over 200 girls playing in that Little League. A lot of girls on this All-Star team also played on their first ever All-Star team in Cave Creek. Lexi, Lily, Ava, and Ellie are part of that first ever several first ever all-star team so they've been playing together for quite a long time this has been a dream of theirs so they have made it a reality this year and are embracing every single moment that they get to set foot on this field in the greater phoenix area and seeing their team on the top stage riley dotson for oklahoma Sees that one in for a strike. A lot of fun to be around a player that just is like a little spark and then she creates like a wildfire, just contagious type of personality. Over to Fossey and Fossey at shortstop. Moving to her left and gets the first out. Defense on both sides of the field already in this ball game. A nice pitch by Lily Hamill. It gets Riley Dotson jammed on this pitch. She hits it back up the middle, but Olivia Fossey cuts it off, fires it over to first to get the first out. And we talked at the beginning of this ball game that the defenses for both squads were really going to have to step up behind their pitchers, just knowing how good both of these offenses are. And so far today, they've done exactly that. And I think Nevada and Missouri in our first game helped to set that tone. We've seen it all here, though. Like, great defense, wonderful pitching, outstanding hitting. And no fall off here. Is, that's what is expected at this level. You're making it the final eight teams. you got to bring your A game. Lily Brev Beverage, the 1-1 one -one count. Beverage, the chopper over to Honey. Honey misplays it, picked up by Fossey. And Beverage aboard at first base. This one's a tough play for the infield for Arizona to make because it's hit off of the end of the bat by Beverage. Another good-looking pitch out of the hand of Hamill. And Honey gets a good jump on it, gets her feet over to it, but just doesn't get her glove low enough to be able to come up with that ground ball cleanly and allows Beveridge to reach base safely. 
Heine Hicks at the plate. And Oklahoma has a chance once again to take advantage of a miscue from Arizona. Hicks, the first baseman. He was known for hitting home runs over the fence, which is always a big deal at this stage. Topped off her season with a grand slam even. There are her proud grandparents there. And we mentioned just getting to know this zone and understanding what's a ball, what's a strike, feeling it out. Hamill thought it was a good pitch. So did the fans from Arizona. <laughs> I was going to say, if you can't tell, Arizona definitely <laughs> wanted that one called for a strike. They are calling for that upper part of the zone to be called in today's game. Hicks lines out to Kundal and two away. But just great response by Lily Hamill. You throw a pitch in there, you think it maybe should have been called a strike. It's not. There's nothing you can do out of, about it. You just got to shake it off, move on to the very next pitch. She does exactly that and gets the second out. Tucker, first pitch swinging. Allie Tucker, big fan of Sydney Pennington, played at Oklahoma State. We know how important softball is around the state of Oklahoma. That off-speed offering, it gets away from Gillum. And Beveridge moving now into scoring position. A nice pitch out of the hand of Lily Hamill. A good-looking off-speed. And it looked like Kendall Gillum went to snag it and bring it to her throwing arm just too quickly. And that's what allows it to bounce away. That runner moving over into scoring position. Good scoop up on that pitch from Gillum behind the dish. These catchers have had to work really hard out here as well. It is warm here in Greenville. You can see Kendall Gillum reaching down to get that dirt, make sure that she gets a good grip on that softball when she's throwing it back to her pitcher. We talk about just the weather conditions this week in Greenville. We we saw a ton of sunshine, certainly a lot of humidity, and it has not escaped us today. 89 degrees feels like it's about to touch 100, and no wind moving through, and I'm not going to even note what could be coming through later this afternoon. All we know right now is that the sun is shining. Mm -hmm. It is great Softball weather may be a little bit warm, but we do see these players making adjustments throughout the game. The pitchers have rosin bags out there in the circle, grabbing the dirt, doing whatever they can to get as good of a grip on those softballs as possible. Another one fouled off by Allie Tucker. And you think about, you know, the teams like Nevada and Arizona coming from those dry heat areas and the desert areas coming here with, with all of this humidity. But Lily Hamill, who has been a gamer this week, she has got a good grip on this ball and trying to strike out Tucker. Gillum keeps it in front of her. So a number of pitches low in the dirt. And it seems especially that off speed is the one that's going down in the dirt most consistently from Hamill. And we do know that's a pitch that she's going to need to be able to throw consistently for strikes against such a strong offense in Oklahoma. Tucker squeaks it through the 5-6 hole and coming home is Lily Beveridge and the first run on the board for Oklahoma. 
This is a great example of what we were talking about, the production one through nine in this Oklahoma lineup. Allie Tucker sitting in the eighth spot in the lineup comes through in the clutch. She knows she's got a runner into scoring position, two outs, so what? She drives that ball straight through the 5-6 hole to get the first run on the board for Oklahoma. The first hit given up by Hamill. And already Oklahoma had a tourney high, 22 runs. The chopper back to Hamill, handles it, and retires Cambry Casey. The Oklahoma fans love it. Out there, and I think seeing all of the support from collegiate athletes, Olympians, you name it, people are tuning in because once you start playing softball or once you start watching softball, you are in it for life. You are invested in these girls, are committed to growing the game across the nation, and they just can't get enough of it. You gotta love the support from, from such a phenomenal athlete like Jocelyn Allo, who just hit your casual 34 home runs, 475 batting average. She can truly do it all up at the plate. And one of the big reasons why a lot of these young ladies say that she is their favorite softball player to watch. And we could very well see these girls playing at the Women's College World Series one day, potentially in the Olympics, if it makes its way back in 2028. Well, a lot of them the said that they were so excited to be able to play here in Greenville to get a taste of what it's like to compete in Oklahoma City for in the Women's College World Series. Them in this age group, this is the biggest stage that you can play on here at the Little League Softball World Series in Greenville. Feeling big time. They get to play on ESPN, show out, and they've been doing it so far this week. The 18-hour drive for the Oklahoma fans from Muskogee, and you know several of them have made the trek to the holy grail, if you will, of softball in Oklahoma City in that USA Hall of Fame stadium, who has gotten some really nice additions during the pandemic. And boy, didn't the World Series live up to all the hype and more after that long layoff. I want a tough pitch to take up there. Working that one inside to Ellie Henry. I thought Cambry Casey might get that one called for strike three, but home plate umpire says not today. But that one is a called third strike. Cambry Casey roll it. You got to love the response, too. The pitch before doesn't go your way. So, hey, you know what? We're going to throw this one on the other side of the plate, work a screwball outside to that left-handed batter, and get that one called for strike three. Ellie Henry is retired. Kaylee Kundal stands in. Kundal, whose father, Brett Kundal, is the manager on this team. Among the many talents she possesses, hula hooping is one of them. Can she do multiple at a time? I wouldn't doubt it. I'd imagine that she can. Now, I can't do even one at a time. <laughs> hula hooping is not one of my special talents, so Kaylee's got me one-upped on that one. Four-foot-ten frame for Kaylee Kundal. I wonder if she moves from, you know, around the waist and does the arms and maybe around the neck as well, <laughs> perhaps all at once. <laughs> I wonder if she learned it from her father, Brett Kundal. I wonder <laughs> if he is a master hula hooper as well. The chopper over to short. Tough throw to handle from tail and star and Ione Hicks gets it, but Kundal is at first. Caitlin Starr had a good jump on this one. Kaylee Kundal hitting it into the 5-6 hole. Starr moves her way over there, gets her feet set, and then throws it just a little bit too low into the ground. Ine Hicks not able to come up with it cleanly. And that is a runner on board for Arizona. When you think back to the bottom of the second inning, that's exactly how Oklahoma got their scoring started, capitalizing on a mistake. And the base hit from Bria Belden and Kundal, who's got some speed, stops at second. But the first hit given up by Cambry Casey. 
I like the aggressiveness that we just saw out of Bria Belden. Knowing they had just gotten a runner on board, she's going to do whatever she can to advance that runner 60 feet. Swings at the first pitch that she likes, and it's outside. She doesn't try to do too much with it. She doesn't try to pull it to left field. She just pops that thing right into right field to continue this rally for Arizona. Arizona finds themselves in a good position. Two on, just one out. Lexi Honey at the plate. Struck out looking her first time up. Only swinging the miss there. Casey getting it in at 57 miles per hour. Runs have been hard to come by for this Arizona team, but they could potentially even it up here in the top of the third. Tony, who has collected three hits during pool play. But blowing it by her once again is Casey. Tony attacking pitches in the zone, just not able to connect with it. And it seems like in this inning specifically, Cambry Casey has really upped the velocity, a little extra zest on those pitches that she's bringing in there. That's a zinger as well. A strikeout, the sixth for Casey. A nice way to bounce back after those back-to-back -back runners got on board safely. Attacking the strike zone, noticing that Honey wasn't able to connect with this curveball, so she goes to it yet again and gets the second strike out of this inning. She's had two strikeouts in each inning, and Lily Hamill still with another Opportunity to drive in the first run. Here she is, the 1 0. <laughs> Hamill is ready, so is Casey. The pitch on the way. Now it seems as this game's gone on, I know, Tiffany, we've talked about it several times throughout this week, but the pace of play seems to have stepped up a lot. And what I mean by that is these pitchers are not taking a lot of time in between pitches. They're getting into a really good rhythm, a groove out there on, on both sides of the field. And I, you got to wonder if it's maybe because it's hot, they want to just get back going, not think too much. But you notice that these pitchers have the same routine every single time that they step onto the rubber, the same amount of steps that it takes them to get there. Their mental clearance before every single pitch to clear their mind. It doesn't matter what happened before this. All that matters is this pitch right here. And I've got to think the adrenaline is pumping, blood flowing, especially for Cambry, Cambry, and Kiowa as well. So they are really tight-knit community. Love softball, rally around it, brings everyone together. And it doesn't matter what age you are. As long as you like to get out there and play a little softball, there's always room. <laughs> yeah, They're I love, welcome. You, you love hearing from Coach Galvin about that Na Native American heritage representation for Oklahoma. And just how, it, it, like you mentioned, Tiffany, it doesn't matter what age you are. She said from age 8 all the way through 50s, 60s, you name it, they all have the same love for the game of softball. And it brings them closer as a community. It brings them all together. And they have a lot of celebrations to be able to watch these softball games, watch parties going on back in Oklahoma to show their support for these young ladies out here representing their hometown. Oh, yeah, they told me Creek Nation definitely has watch parties going on. Melon, Barbecue, Lopez, Mexican Grill, and you know they're cheering right now for Tail and Star, a part of that Muskogee Creek Nation. Tail and Star absolutely ripping this one back up the middle. When the ball is hit right back up the middle, you know that the batter was perfectly on time with their swing. This one, a line drive straight out to Bria Belden out there in center field. And that brings a runner on base for Juliana Hutchins. <laughs> she reached on an error her last time up, and 
She's had several extra base hits. Four of her six hits have gone for either a double or a home run. She's hit, scored, and drove in a run in each game. Already with a one nothing advantage, Hutchins in Oklahoma can see more as that one is a laser right back up the middle. Taylor Starr with the wheels around third and she's home. Goose Hutchins flexing on him out there at second base showing why she's one of the top hitters here in Greenville. Coming up, an opportunity to score another run for Oklahoma. Drives this pitch directly back up the middle. Her timing perfect. She has such a short and compact swing, driving that one back up to center field. And a nice job of base running by Taylor Starr to make her way all the way to home from first base. So let's see if she can complete the trifecta. She's got the hit. She's driven in the run. And oh yeah. Mm, now she flex. said that her favorite food is ice, but I think she's got ice in her veins <laughs> because she comes through in the clutch every single time. And what she told us uh, about, you know, Candace Burnett, the cleanup hitter, what she loves about her is the fact that she's going to back her up. You know, like you say, okay, let me get past Goose Hutchins. I see the numbers and maybe we'll We'll look over you and say, let's get to Candace Burnett. Uh-uh. Can't do that. Well, and it really makes it so hard to pitch to them, too, because one's left-handed and one's right-handed, and pitchers typically have one bat, one side of the plate that they throw better to. And Candace Burnett is such a stud up there, can hit all types of pitches that she sees, and she has the confidence in her abilities to be able to hit behind somebody like Goose Hutchins. Three-game hitting streak for Burnett. Remember, she drove in five of Oklahoma's nine runs in that win over Nevada. That was Saturday during pool play, the last time Oklahoma touched the field until now. The one-two. Burnett caught looking. Great pitch there from Lily Hamill for the strikeout. Lily Hamill is not going to back, back down no matter who is up at the plate. This one a curveball on the outside half of the plate. She gets ahead in the count to Candace Burnett and continues to attack that strike zone. A really good looking pitch out of the hand of Hamill. And a nice bond between Hamill and Honey as they often embrace before every inning, and Pony just making sure Hamill is all good. And I'm not sure what Brett Kundle said to Lily Hamill and this team before coming into today's game, but whatever it is has them fired up and going right at Oklahoma. And, you know, I wonder if maybe they worked on a bit of a mechanical change with Lily Hamill before this game when we got an opportunity to talk to Coach Kundle before they even got to Greenville, he said that that was something that they had worked with Lily on after their regionals. They noticed something with her drag foot, that her heel was actually dragging on the ground and she was losing velocity because of that. I wonder if that's something maybe they practiced in between yesterday and today. Dotson, the backhand from Van Landshut at first, and that ends the inning. But the RBI double from Goose Hutchins, and uh-oh, the goose is loose. Juliana Hutchins coming through yet again. She is making her name something to remember, driving that one out there. And Oklahoma gets another insurance run on the board in the rest of this game. Eva Van Land shoot. We'll start it off here. Top four, trailing by two. Arizona. Looking for their first win of the Little League Softball World Series. Shut out during pool play. And received the four seed in the Jenny Fitch pool side because of with the withdrawal from New York. Cambry Casey already with seven strikeouts 
the 0-2 pitch. And rung her up. Collect that number eight. Well, tonight our Monday Night Baseball matchup features two of the top teams in the American League. The Central leading White Sox host the A's in the first of a four-game set. Our coverage starts at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, 5 Pacific on ESPN. And the app, one app, one tap. You know, I got to bring back some of the White Sox history that we dropped in our broadcast yesterday when doing some research during one of the rain delays. I wondered what is the longest rain delay on record? And it happened to be the Rangers at Chicago playing the White Sox August 12th, 1990, a seven hour and 23 minute rain delay. And what came of that delay, what ended up happening? They ended up postponing the game. Mm -hmm. And not a single pitch was thrown, but okay. it was indeed a seven-hour and 23-minute rain delay. But there were at least 500 fans in the stands that waited all seven hours. Good effort there by Einix to nearly get that one as it fell into foul territory. Now that one looked like a bit of a, a close play. Over down the first base line, hits her glove, and it looks like it just barely bounces into foul territory before rolling over into fair territory. But because of that, still ruled a foul ball. Another batter from Arizona caught frozen. Another really good pitch low in the zone. Cambry Casey continuing to work on the outer edges of this strike zone. This one coming in right at the knees. A tough pitch. You can see the reaction, just not liking that strike zone, but it's something that the pitchers and the hitters are going to have to adjust to throughout this game. Dalen Flowers, who was a defensive substitution in right field, getting her first taste of Cambry Casey. And approaching a little league high for strikeouts. As Cambry Casey is moving through that total continuing to add up. Dalen Flowers, the seventh grader. Loves to deliver in critical moments and just whatever she can do to make an impact in the game here with two outs. She just wants to get a board to extend the inning. And perhaps we're looking at a future surgeon at the plate in Flowers. There's that pitch again right there at the knees, something that she's been getting called consistently throughout this game. She's noticing it and taking advantage of those pitches outside of those right-handed batters. Five straight strikeouts for Cambry Casey. Oh, yeah. Three up, three down here in the top of the fourth inning. Cambry Casey truly turning it on as this game goes on. One with the changeup, one with the drop ball. And oh yeah, how about a little curveball action to finish it off? Time. Little League Sandlot Fun Days is a player-led unstructured opportunity for local Little League programs to provide a fun, relaxed activity for baseball and softball players. Kids get to make the rules, the lineups, and the calls. Just give them all the equipment they need and let them play. Learn more today at littleleague.org slash Sandlot Fun Days. Good crowd on hand for quarterfinal action from the Little League Softball World Series. Two more games coming your way. Texas and North Carolina followed by New Jersey and Virginia. An excellent crew will be here to take you on in to the championship. Courtney Lyle, Amanda Scarborough, Michelle Smith, and Chris Budden. 
the pinch hitter for Oklahoma, Aubrey Davis, ahead in the count, one nothing. Smacks it over to Fossey, Liv Fossey saying, hey, Brother Jack, check me out, routine ground out, I got it. Oh, he's got a little bit of a smile on his face. <laughs> Got to be proud after watching that stellar defensive play by Olivia Fossey. Making this one look easy. Gets her feet over there, set in time, gathers herself, and fires it across the diamond for out number one. Liv Fossey. He's never going to let Jack live that down, just <laughs> so you know. It's going to be a topic of discussion for a little bit. You know, I wonder if both of his sisters said, hey, now that she said yes... Do you want to make us a sign? You know, give us give us some love out here on the field. Yeah. Why did you do it for her, but not for <laughs> us? <laughs> Miley Needham, the pinch hitter up. Seventh grader. Who a big fan of Rachel Garcia, Larry Bird. She participates in some activities, including cheerleading. Another pitcher for this Oklahoma squad as well. They truly do have a complete pitching staff, pitchers that they can throw out there at any time. Oh, and that pitch just missing outside of the zone. Jack Fossey not happy with that call along with the rest of the Arizona fans wanting that one called for strike three. <laughs> and we were wondering just how Lily Hamill would do in the circle. Remember the last inning she was running to the dugout, appeared to have maybe rolled something. We're unsure, but... Looks like she's all good. That one smacked to right through the three, four hold and she's safe. Needham gets the base hit. These outfielders, especially in right, have made those plays over at first. Very, very close. Molly Brown coming up, running, charging this one, fires it over to first base and Miley Needham's just barely able to beat that one out for a base hit but she got a really good piece of the ball on that one to drive it through the 3-4 hole. When you look at this Arizona team and you say to yourself, well, they're coming in here winless. They are putting up a great fight against an Oklahoma squad who has been the top-hitting team through pool play. A number of hot bats in the lineup, and, and thus far, Lily Hamill, has done a pretty nice job just allowing two runs. When I think so far throughout this tournament, even though, as you mentioned, Tiffany, Arizona has not been able to come out with a win, you wouldn't be able to tell that by watching how they play on the field and the energy that they bring every single day. It looks like we might be going to a video replay on this play over at first base, which to my eyes looks clearly safe over there. Now the question is, did she get there in time does she as she touches the first uh, the white bag there's also the safety bag there and yeah so the, the runner the orange bag mm -hmm. is for the runner the white bag mm -hmm. is for the defender and we did see a play earlier on in Greenville where the defender came across and tagged the orange bag but because she did not tag the white bag, the runner was ruled safe over there. Our umpires taking a look at it. While we have this break, I want to get your view of instant replay, how it's been utilized here this week, and um, how effective has it been? 
I think it's been a great tool to use. Remember that the managers have unlimited successful challenges. They do only have two unsuccessful challenges throughout the game. And I think it's been a great tool to make sure that we are getting the calls right on the field. That's what it's put in place for. These girls are playing at a very high level. Things are happening very, very fast. So it's been great to be able to utilize the video replay throughout this week. Looks like they are going to indeed call her safe on that one. I think it's the right, the right call going through the bag. But so, it's something that I know that people are pushing to get even at the collegiate level. We've seen it used throughout a couple of conference tournaments. The SEC softball tournament, they were able to use video replay. And I know it's something that people are really pushing for to get throughout the regular season as well. To my understanding, we will see this more frequently kind of um, a standard across uh, many of the sports that we get a chance to watch and enjoy and so to have it at this level for also the players to get used to it right understanding what the rhythm and pace of the game is if you're if you have a flow going or a rally started or you're in a rhythm it was one thing that a lot of these young ladies said that they were looking forward to, not just getting the opportunity to play on ESPN, but also getting to utilize the video replay as well. So these young players are thinking about it even at a young age. With the pass ball and a runner at second base, Fossey over to first, not in time. And it could have been some player interference between Needham and the shortstop, Olivia Fossey. Yeah, so the umpire over at second base immediately called Needham out. You'll notice Olivia Fossey comes to charge to field this ball, and it's that interference as Needham is running towards third base where she makes contact with Olivia Fossey is the reason why she was called out. And we do know from our experiences throughout the rest of this tournament that that's not a play that is reviewable, but you can see clear contact made by Needham as she's running from second to third base. So she's automatically called out. And you can see Coach Galvin even talking to her when she went to third base saying, hey, you got to do whatever you can to try to avoid that fielder because the fielder has the right to make a play on the ball. And Coach Galvin, having played softball herself at Fresno State, was a... Catcher for the Bulldogs and a recent graduate. One on and two out. And Cheyenne Dill, the pinch hitter up now. You know, we talk about how much these collegiate players want to give back to these young softball players. And you just look at this Oklahoma team being coached by both Haley Galvin over at third base, as you mentioned, a fantastic player at Fresno State, but also Taylor Redding coaching first. Both softball players just wanting these young ladies to enjoy the game of softball as much as they did, wanting to get involved as much as possible and grow the game and be involved in it in any way that they can. Interestingly enough, Haley and Taylor played travel ball together, although they played against each other while in high school. Redding was a pitcher at Rogers State, D2 program, and we asked them, well, well, how do you translate the game to, you know, 10, 11, 12 year olds? And it's a challenge, they've worked on it, they said. All season, Dill, it's a short hop by Fossey, picked up and thrown the first in time. Runner left stranded for Oklahoma, it's Arizona up to bat. Squad, and she is doing it yet again out there in the circle, really working those balls on the outside part of the strike zone, not leaving that too much of that green on the white part of the plate working that curveball low and away, and she has tallied up 10 strikeouts already on the afternoon, including strikeouts to the previous five batters that she has faced. And don't forget she had 11 strikeouts against New Jersey. So uh, 
some phenomenal pitching performances we have seen all throughout with Giovanni Cornell, Reese Poole, Kennedy Watson earlier today with the no-hitter. Jenna Kiefer, who's coming up in our late game for Virginia. And when I think back to those stellar pitching performances, the thing that stands out in my mind is these pitchers establishing the zone early and taking advantage of whatever zone that home plate umpire is giving them. So far in this game, Cambry Casey taking advantage of that low and outside part of the strike zone that is being called to those right-handed batters. A tough pitch for them to get good, solid barrel on. And she's also got that great late movement that makes it tough to hit as well. Well, she listed that throwing a perfect. lead is Chris Paul, CP3, a part of that Phoenix Suns team that made it to the NBA Finals. We have enjoyed seeing the regional love, too, of who your favorite player is, some of your favorite teams, and sometimes it just depends on where you're located in the U.S., Well, Brett Kundal says, Pottinger, just a coach's dream. Always willing to do what is asked of her. Helps out. And here she is able to score a base hit to start it off in the fifth. A fantastic two-strike approach by Elsie Pottinger coming up and just tattoos this outside pitch right back up the middle. You could hear that one off of the bat. She squared that one up perfectly. And this could be the spark that Arizona needs to get some scoring going here in the top of the fifth inning. Coach Kundal did tell us that her nickname is Smiles, and we're seeing exactly why over there at first base. <laughs> And she has plenty to smile about as we will see if a rally is underway. Jordan Roscoe, the pinch hitter. Jordan's parents are here and they want to see their daughter have some success, JR and Stacy. Stacy told me before the game that mortgage company in which she works for back home. They've got a watch office, a watch party in the office. <laughs> what a better way to spend your Monday than watching these young ladies out here competing. Trying to lay down the sacrifice and now 0-2. They're the proud parents of Jordan. Very superstitious gal. Had a winning streak during the season with the same hairstyle and a lucky bag. With an energy drink, a little Subway. <laughs> you know, you hope that she used that same superstitious routine coming into today's game and this bat at bat specifically, trying to do whatever she can to move her teammate over into scoring position. Instead, Casey. Strikes out, so reaching her best in the tournament, 11th K today against Arizona. And another great response by Casey in the circle after giving up that hit to Elsie Pottinger. The at bat before gets ahead of Jordan Orozco and then comes in there with that ball tailing down and inside. And she's able to get her 11th strikeout and tie her Little League Softball World Series high. Well, the mandatory play says that every player will get the opportunity to have an at-bat. They can run for themselves and 
Jack's younger sister, and Liv's twin sister, Ava Fossey, now coming in. One on, one out for Fossey. Looks that one in for a strike. And we talk a lot about these former players giving back. And when reading through all these questionnaires, Ava Fossey listed Tori Lewis as her favorite athlete. And that was one of my teammates when I played at the University of Tennessee. She played center field for us. And she was a big reason why we were so successful in that 2013 Women's College World Series. She had the game-winning hit against Washington to get us to that championship series against Oklahoma. But all these young ladies across the country just wanting to grow the sport, inspire these young athletes to play the sport that they loved growing up. And Fossey just has to smile that one off after she can't believe that last pitch was called for a strike. Got to protect the plate. You know, with that outside part of the plate being called so consistently throughout this game as a right-handed batter, I would maybe try to make an adjustment by moving further onto the plate. You can see Ava Fossey's left toe almost touching that chalk line. Full count to Ava Fossey. Arizona having four outs to work with if they want to stay alive. And Cambry Casey, a dozen Ks for CC. Casey seems to be able to locate these pitches low and outside in the exact, exact same spot to every single batter. That one just barely getting the low and outside corner of that strike zone. It continues to tail away from the right-handed batters, making it difficult for them to get any piece of the barrel on it. Back to the top with Bria Belden. Well, we heard Brett Kundal give up a fiery speech before we started this inning. Let off with the Pottinger single. She's still standing at first. Belden was responsible for one of the RBIs for Arizona in the tournament during pool play. The pitch. And therefore, strike two and two. There's that pitch right at the knees. Just continues to get those calls. And as a pitcher, when you are getting that spot called, you want to keep hitting it as much as you possibly can. Arizona coming out of... The Jenny Finch pool, the number four seed. Oklahoma, the top seed from the Mendoza pool. Taking off, caught in the middle, but hey, guess what? It's ball four, <laughs> <laughs> so no need. You gotta love the reaction of Elsie Pottinger. She was running down to second base going, wait a second, I thought that was ball four. <laughs> You got to give the defense some props, though. They were going to finish out that play until the umpires told her, hey, that's that's ball four. Nice job by Taylor and Stark. Coming across, making sure to get that tag just in case. Just in case. Good eye from Lexi Honey. And you just feel like this Arizona team is due. They're trying to apply some pressure here. In the fifth against Cambry Casey, who has had an excellent outing so far. 
Well, a difference that I've seen from Arizona and Oklahoma is when Arizona gets batters on board, Cambry Casey comes right back with some strikeouts, so some unproductive outs for this Arizona offense. And on the flip side, Oklahoma has been able to capitalize on a couple of Arizona's miscues in the infield. So for Arizona here, it's just trying to limit the strikeouts, do whatever you can to try to put some pressure on the defense by putting the ball in play. That one smacked over to A.J. Tucker, able to collect it in time to toss it to first. So two left on base for Arrows. Pitch off of Montana Fouts to get the game-winning run in the SEC Tournament Championship. There were so many hitters that came to mind that Juliana Hutchins' swing reminded me of. The power of a Jocelyn Allo or a Bailey Hemphill. The quick hands of somebody like Jesse Warren or Charlotte Eccles. But it was truly her ability to hit pitches so far out of the zone with such power is what really reminded me of Amanda Lorenz. It's Hutchins who's due up third here. And, you know, we have been in awe of her swing, the way that she just can protect the plate, the way that she can go get those pitches to your points. And it's one of the sweetest, purest swings that we've seen, especially from a youngster. I mean, she is... Um, you know, she, like, scooped that one up. It was like hitting a, a three-wood. And she made it look easy, yeah. too. It, and it makes you think that that was the type of pitch that she was hunting in that situation, looking down in the zone and being able to execute a game plan is what I think separates her mental approach to her at-bats so far at a young age. Something that Amanda Lorenz did so well was her consistency up at the plate. When she went up there, she had a plan. If she didn't see a pitch that she liked, then she let it go by and got her way on base. And we've seen Juliana Hutchins do that throughout this Little League World Series as well, passing that bat along to Candace Burnett behind her. But so much consistency out of her at such a young age is impressive. Hot shot down the third baseline. Alexis Kierstead leading it off, and she wants a triple, and she's going in for three. She's got it. Alexis Kierstead getting all of this pitch, driving it straight down the left field line, utilizing that good velocity on the pitch out of the hand of Lily Hamill to her advantage, driving it all the way out to the wall. And look at her eyes. She had her eyes on third base the entire time she was running between first and second. No hesitation at all as she went around and made it safely into third base. Nickname She-Hulk because she is one of the strongest hitters on this team we just saw a great example of that turning on it such a quick short powerful swing driving it all the way out to that left field wall Talon star over to Fossey at short they will concede the run the play at first and she's safe she's able to leg it out Not only have we seen power in this Oklahoma offense, but we're seeing speed as well. First with Alexis Kierstead being able to leg it all the way over to third base on that hit down the line. And Taylin Starr following that up with this infield single, a close play over at first as we're taking another look at it here in super slow motion. Man, yeah. that one was close. As soon as she hit it, I thought it was going to just be a routine out. And it's almost like she picked up speed halfway down that baseline, really turned it on to try to leg that one out. Olivia Fossey was playing back at shortstop, respecting the power that these Oklahoma batters have, had to throw that ball a long way. It seems like we're going to get another video review on that one. And I think it's important to note again that the call on the field was that Taylor Starr was safe over at first base. So needing indisputable video evidence to overturn this call. And <sighs> Tiffany, how That's, many times have we yeah. seen video replay this week? And it's like every time I see a different view of it, <laughs> my opinion of the play changes. This one's so close over at first. But as you see definitively, Dave Byers over at first base, the umpire saying safe. And that initial call on the field, so important 
because is that enough? Right here, we're going back and forth. And again, you look at a different angle. You have a different opinion. Does it stand out to you one way or the other? And if not, you've got to keep it as is what the call is on the field as Goose Hutchins is just joking with Haley Galvin before she's up to the plate and we'll see what Mike Como says. Yeah, such a close play. Oprah at first and again she was able to reach base safely because defensively Arizona decided to play back in the middles respecting that power. Talon Starr just legging out that infield single and now Goose Hutchins finds herself with another runner on board during this at bat. Goose Hutchins had that two run homer against North Carolina in that shutout victory. And they will intentionally walk her because of the power that she brings to the plate. But as we have made mention, Candace Burnett ain't an easy out. You can see the big smile on Hutchins' face over there. And again, even on Candace Burnett up at the plate, something that she has had to do several times throughout this season is hit behind Goose Hutchins. And it's not an easy mentality to have when you're that batter that hits behind such a great hitter. And I was actually in that role back in college, and sometimes I would get really frustrated with the other teams because they would walk my teammate to get to me. And every once in a while, I'd let, to, let it get to me too much up at the plate. So it took me some time to be able to refocus, stick to my routine when I got up to the plate. But that's something that Candace Burnett has done very well throughout this week, almost thriving in those situations when these teams put Hutchins on first base. Well, she has seen the ball well, much like you did in your senior season at Tennessee when you hit 18 home runs and Burnett puts it into play. At shortstop, the throw over to first. And again, it's close, but Burnett is out. Runners move to first, uh, second and third, excuse me. Fossey very busy over there at shortstop in this inning. This ball hit into the 5-6 hole and a smart play to come across and throw to one. You might think, hey, maybe try to get that lead runner over at third base, but I think because that ball was slowly hit to her, she wouldn't have been able to get the out over at third. Maybe just a half a second too late. The chopper first pitch swinging and there's Fossey again. She says one, two, Another nice job of fielding by Olivia Fossey over there at shortstop. It looked like she might have thought that she had a force out at second base, but because she had thrown Candace Burnett out on the play before, nobody over at first, but she's still able to get that out over at one on this ground ball. A little extra out over there at second base. She's practicing turning those double plays. Made it look easy, too. Hey, look. Liv, I'm right there with you, girl, because I thought the same thing. So it's okay. There she is. That's the third out. Arizona in their final attempt to come back, trailing by four. What a wonderful time we have had here in Greenville, North Carolina for the Little League Softball World Series. Second game of the quarterfinals between Oklahoma and Arizona. And the Cactus Foothills Little League All-Stars are trailing. They are down to their final three outs. They are searching for their first win of the tournament. All can turn around right here. And if you've ever listened to Brett Kundal try to fire this team up, you would understand why these young ladies believe. Well, even just after talking to him for about three minutes, he had me ready to suit up and go out there and play for him. Just such an inspirational leader for this team has been talking to them, giving them positive words of encouragement throughout this entire week here in Greenville. 13 girls, one heartbeat. That's the theme that has 
bonded these young ladies together. You think back to 2020 and all that went on in the country and throughout the world. And look, we're still in the pandemic here, but certainly these young ladies were itching to get back onto the field. They worked on their softball games during quarantine, hung out with their families, played with pets. And I think Cambry Casey just decided to work on her pitching mechanics. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, Cambry Casey has been a spectacular so far in this game. Again, working that pitch outside to these right-handed batters, and she's done a very nice job of keeping it low in the zone, right between the thighs and the knees, as where she has lived all game long. Casey is facing off against Eva Van Lanshoot. Van Lanshoot was struck out twice. Van Lanshoot, who hopes to one day be a psychologist. We'll see if she can play a little mind trick here on Casey. Well, from the previous games that we call from Arizona, including yesterday, we've just seen a lot more aggressiveness from them at the plate. They've cleaned up some of the defensive miscues. And I was very impressed by Lily Hamill's appearance in the circle mm -hmm. throughout today's game as well, having to battle through the rain delay yesterday. This one popped up going down near the first base wall in that camera well. And Van Lanshoot will have another swing. There's a good look at Hamill in the dugout for Arizona, the 12 year old. And she never got frustrated. Even when it did start to rain, you could tell she was struggling to get her a good grip on the softball. She had the same presence out there in the circle, showing the same leadership no matter what was happening around her. And we saw a great example of that yet again today, actually coming out with a bit more velocity mm -hmm. on her pitches, a bit more spin and a bit more movement to try to hold this Oklahoma offense at bay. Full count. And fouling it away. Good at bat here from Van Lanshoot. A good example of the fighting mentality that we've seen out of this Arizona squad the entire week. Van Lanshoot just trying to get on time for these pitches coming out of the hand of Cambry Casey, who's somebody else who has stepped up the velocity in today's game. Let's hook this one into a right and two away. Nice job by Alexis Kierstead getting a good jump on that one, thought for a second it might have eyes and fall down into right field, but she read that one well off the bat to secure it for out number two. Arizona down to their final out. Kendall Gillum wants to keep giving them life. Gillum, the 12-year-old catcher out of Scottsdale, Arizona. Has enjoyed her Little League experience simply because she says it's just like fun and like less stressful than playing club. <laughs> that is one thing you've seen from every single one of the teams that has competed here in Greenville, that they are having a great time doing it playing a sport that they love with their friends out there, getting to represent their hometowns here at the World Series. The 2-1. Nip the outside, 2-2. Two two. Oklahoma, the only undefeated team and they hope to remain that way if they can get one more out. Mm -hmm. 
Remember, coming up next here on ESPN2, Texas and North Carolina, both with wins after those long delays yesterday. Or affected by the delay, and how about that smash from Kendall Gillum? Gillum working her way into a full count, battling in this at bat, gets a pitch that she can handle, an uncharacteristically high pitch that we've seen thrown out of Cambry Casey, and she jumps all over it, driving it out into left field. And you gotta love the effort that we saw from Lily Beveridge out there to prevent that one from going out to the wall and keep Kendall Gillum over at first. Arizona still has life, not done yet, third. Base hit given up by Cambry Casey. Brett Kundal goes to the phone, calls in a substitution. And it reinserts Molly Brown back into the game. Looks like we might see a special pinch runner coming in off the bench. Elsie Pottinger coming in to run for the catcher, Kendall Gillum. Now remember, Pottinger had that pinch hit single last inning. So a lot of movement for Arizona. We'll see if it pays off. This one lifted to right. Kierstead is there, and that ends the ball game. Oklahoma remains undefeated with a 4-0 shutout over Arizona. Arizona fighting till the very end. A great performance here in Greenville, but Oklahoma, the complete a team win, solid defensive plays, great base running, great offense, and a fantastic performance in the circle by Cambry Casey. We'll tip your hat as well to Lily Hamill and the Cactus Foothills Little League team out of Cave Creek, Arizona. They gave it their all this week, but just too much from Oklahoma. Undefeated since making it here to Greenville. And they have continued to just run off wins going back to that regional round. And it will be a good one starting tomorrow at 4 Eastern over on right here ESPN2, Missouri, and Oklahoma. Remember, we've got two more games coming up. The number one team in the Finch Division, Virginia. The nightcap with New Jersey. Up next will be Texas and North Carolina. Cambry Casey, her favorite subject is